So, hello. It's, uh, it's a bit wet out there, isn't it? Not really a day for camping. <laughs> hello, it is me from the future. I did a bad job of introdu introducing this video when I was filming. So this video is basically about the main three things that, you, that we uh, rely on for camping. It's our tent, our sleeping bags and our sleeping mats. So I am quickly looking over our gear to make sure that it's all still in working order before Carl and I go away for the weekend to do some camping. And I thought I would just share my musings with you. Um, so I hope you find it interesting. Um, also, my camera is having a bit of a, a meltdown at the moment. It doesn't like to focus properly. So apologies if the focusing is a bit creative in this video. Um, not all of it is me. Some of it is just Arthur doing what he wants. Okay. Back to present me? Past me? Oh, I don't know what this is. <laughs> okay. So, I guess the first thing that I can look at is Carl's sleeping bag, because I actually just washed this uh, very, very recently. So it's like, it's nice and clean. Um, at least, it smells like it is. So Carl was really afraid that, um, he had got some mould on the sleeping bag um, because when we finished the carry away um, everything was, all of our stuff was so 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 wet and we were also like incredibly exhausted so when we stopped um, we actually didn't even look at our gear for a couple of days and then Carl realised that he had a really damp gross sleeping bag just, just stewing there in his bag um, but to be honest, I'm really happy with how clean this looks. Like, I've never seen his sleeping bag look this nice. If I'm perfectly honest. Um, and it's been like airy ash, like all loose. Um, yeah, I think that's actually pretty perfect. I don't think he needs to wear it anymore. That looks good to me. So, his sleeping bag is... So it's mammoth, I'm assuming. Because of the little uh, guy here on the bottom. But, like, it's the kind of sleeping bag he's had for about a hundred years and has just kind of used through everything. Oh, wait, it has... okay. It says it's a, a Jungleac compact spring sleeping bag. I definitely feel like I didn't pronounce any of that correctly. It's not actually a down bag. So there's no need for me to worry about it so much. Um, see people, read the tags of your <laughs> of your goods. So it's actually a synthetic bag. It's a polyester bag. It's kind of it's got like a a temperature rating of one degree. It's kind of like its comfort zone, and it says it can go to plus twenty three and minus fourteen. So it's a really wide ranging sleeping bag. Yeah, the things you learn when you start. You can turn on the camera and uh, start talking. So yeah, that's Carl's bag. Um, he loves it. Hopefully it's going to last him um, many more adventures now that it's nice and clean. Um, my sleeping bag is the second bag that I've had for this trip so far. So I started off with a uh, Van Gogh Venom 200. And that was a two season bag. So it was super, super light, like packed down almost the same size as my sleeping mat. It was perfect in the like summer months, but on either end of um, like when we started walking in April, it was way, way, way too light a bag. Um, I almost froze to death a couple of nights. And because we were starting earlier um, than last year when we started walking this year, I definitely wanted a new bag. So I kind of, I kind of went crazy, <laughs> and I got a North Face Gold Kazoo. So it's got a, this one is a down bag, it's got a 650 um, fill or loft. Yeah, it's comfort is like one degree or kind of like zero degrees Celsius and it goes 
down to a limit of minus 5 and then an extreme of minus 22. Um, so there was no way that I was going to get cold in this this year. And it's pretty, pretty huge, pretty amazing, um, definitely worth the investment. There was definitely a few times during the summer where I was very, very warm and I'd be kind of sleeping with it mostly open. But for me that was worth the trade-off of being nice and toasty warm in the colder months. Oh yes, so down sleeping bags all come with like a bigger, looser stuff sack for storing. And make sure to store it in, in its big loose storage bag because that keeps the down nice and loose and fluffy. So probably the best piece of kit that we have is our tent. It's an MSR Hubba Hubba NX. Um, Carl got this four or five years ago at this point. Yeah, over five years ago at this point. Um, on sale at a really good discount, which is why we were able to buy such a beautiful tent. We um, also, as soon as we started Tough Souls, we realised that we also needed to get the footprint for this tent, which is like an extra tarp that you put underneath the tent to protect the bottom of it. And I've been really, really glad that we've had the tarp, um, or the, the footprint um, for the tent, because we've camped on some very rocky ground or just very uh, like lots of roots, just hard grounds, anything that could like damage the, the bottom of the tent and it's much much easier to replace a 50 euro footprint than to replace a whole tent. Um, so yeah I guess I'll just uh, pitch this inside. See, what, see how, it's, how it's holding up. a tent um, inside a house. I probably wouldn't recommend. It's uh, weird. I'm afraid I'm going to break something. I'm afraid I'm going to break the tent or the house. I don't know which one. Um, maybe both. But yeah, this is actually really good. Um, it doesn't even smell as stinky as I expected. Um, you definitely, like, it definitely looks a little bit worn. We've done a lot of travelling in this thing. Um, there's like one tiny piece of grass left in here. So this certainly isn't the biggest tent that you're going to find out there. Um, when Carl and I are sleeping in here, we have our boots out in the little porch area that's just kind of outside the door. And then it's kind of like sardines, um, our bags are stacked at the bottom um, in front of where my feet would be because I am short and Carl needs the full length of the tent to be able to lie out in it. So I guess if you're over six foot tall, this wouldn't be an amazing tent. Or you'd have to maybe sleep diagonally or like tuck your legs a little bit. I will, I, yeah, we haven't actually retreated the outside of this tent. I think that's something that uh, I might do after this weekend away. Um, I don't know if we've ever washed this tent. Oh god. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I think I'm gonna retreat, re waterproof um, the rainfly because that was getting a little bit permeable the last time. And if you kind of sit up and accidentally push the inside mesh up against this, um, you're getting pretty soaked. So, yeah, might have to redo that soon. Now I have to go through the hassle of taking this whole thing down again. But it is still clean. To be honest, I have no idea if we qualify as light, as like heavyweight backpackers, as like ultralight backpackers, light backpackers. Um, so this is our uh, footprint. Oh, you're really not good at focusing today. So this is our um, tent footprint. Um, as you can see, we're very good at 
Yeah. So this is uh, we got the the hubba hubba uh, footprint. Like it weighs pretty much nothing. Um, we're not such kind of hardcore people that we try and do this ultralight. Um, so we don't mind carrying the extra small little package um, if it means that our gear is going to last much longer because that's kind of what's key for us. I don't think we're ultralight. I think ultralight is like some sort of crazy, crazy, uh, like you're going in like under like five kilos or something. I think, I think our base weight is about eight to ten kilos each. So when I say base weight, I refer to our backpack and all our gear minus um, our water or our food because those weights fluctuate a load. Um, so your base weight is the kind of easiest thing to gauge off of. So I think our base weight is roughly eight to ten kilos each, um, but that includes all of our camera and laptops and editing and video gear, which for ages I went, I was like, oh well, we really we're only like six kilos each because or five kilos each because all the video stuff doesn't count but like we do carry it all so if, if we weren't doing this we might be ultralight backpackers but because we are doing this the way we are we're probably medium weight backpackers I'm not sure <laughs> yeah so this is uh, our tent so most of the time we actually don't have everything packed up into this bag so right now the rain fly the inner mesh bit the poles, the ground mat, everything, or the, the footprint, everything is in here. Um, most of the time when we take down the tent, the rain fly is wet. So that actually goes into the stretchy bit of Carl's bag to let that kind of dry and air out because we don't want to squish loads of things in together and make them go all moldy, moldy. So most of the time, this is actually kind of slightly smaller. But it packs down pretty small for a two-person tent, so I think that's... At least in my eyes, that's pretty good and pretty lightweight. Okay, so the last thing that I have to talk about uh, are sleeping mats. Um, so both of them are sleeping mats. When we started off, Carl had the Neo Air and I had the Pro Light. We both had the small version or the, like, the short version. So it would only come to roughly our knees and then the rest of our legs just kind of be on the bare ground. Um, because my sleeping bag was so light, we actually swapped uh, sleeping mats for a while because the Neo Air had a higher aura rating, so it offered more insulation, so it kept me slightly warmer at night. Um, but to be honest, it's like it's it's kind of thicker and uh, it makes a lot more noise when you roll around. So eventually, I decided I didn't like that anymore. I got the warmer sleeping bag, and then I wanted my Pro Light back. But um, Karen had actually fallen in love with my Pro Light mat. So um, we had to do a bit of hunting to find the ProLight because I think they've, they've changed models or they're in between models and we really wanted another one of these things. Um, so eventually we got two of them so now we have the exact same sleeping mat. Um, it's really really great. Um, we haven't punctured them yet. I, I think there was like a very very slow puncture in the Neo Air that we had to the point that I'd blow it up at night and then by the time I'd wake up in the morning I'd be almost touching the ground, there'd still be like some loft in it, so it wasn't quite quite fully punctured, just really really slow. Okay, yeah, so those are our our three main things, our tent, our tent, our sleeping bags and our sleeping mats. And they are really the most important things that you need for camping. Um, neither of us have pillows, we both kind of roll up our coats under our head. Um, once you have a good tent, sleeping bag and sleeping mat, you can kind of go and do anything. Um, and just because ours are super lightweight doesn't mean that you shouldn't just buy whatever you can afford and get out in the hills. Um, this is just what, what we like to use because we live in this stuff. Okay, so before I go, I need to say a huge thank you to our wonderful patrons, as always. Um, we have a Patreon, which is where people um, support us every month to help us keep making videos and writing about the outdoors and sharing our adventures and we really really appreciate you all. Um, thank you so much for helping us so far. This week I'd like to say an extra special thank you to Marcus Kavanagh, Jen Carey and Declan Jennings. Um, your support really means the world to us and um, thank you to all of our patrons. Um, if you'd like to check it out um, our Patreon is patreon.com forward slash tussles and yeah I hope the weather is nicer this weekend for our camping than it is right now. <laughs> Okay. <laughs>
So actually, um, one quick thing before I go. So I know a lot of people have problems deflating um, blow up air mats. And the best way that I have found is that you open up the valve and as you roll, so you roll and then you kneel on it and you just squish, you just roll the whole thing up and you squish all the air on it as you're kneeling on it, like with your hands and with your knees. Squish it all out and then it all end up like this. Then you unroll, you, you, you tighten off the little valve when it's all empty, unroll it. Now it's nice and flat, it's nice and thin. And then you just whoop, fold it up, do one last whoop, roll up like this, open it once more, give it one more like kneel, squish thing, tighten it and that's how you get it back down to the tiny size that it comes in. Um, because I know some people have had problems doing that before and I know that Carl found it, he's not as good as kneeling and squishing the air at them as I am. So who knows, maybe this will help somebody else. <laughs>